You feel good. You're that. That's good. Well, it's always, as I have said before, it, I was happy when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I believe David made that statement once. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know any better place to be to you than in the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, tonight, we are we've got some friends here that's all the way from Georgia. They'll probably be driving down after, after the lunch tonight. And then we will, some of them from way down, I hope you stay over. <laughs> and Amen. what rooms we got is open to you. And then Wednesday night we'll continue on on the study. And then the Lord willing next Sunday again. And then Chautauqua begins on the 6th. So... All that's got your vacations planned, we're expecting a great, wonderful time Amen. at the Chautauqua. That's where we always have such a marvelous time. Not too bigger crowds. We run sometimes. It'll hold up to about, I suppose we could put 10,000 in it easy. But usually last year, I think we had around about 7,000. Something like that it was a packed out place. But... There's plenty of room to stand and yeah. seats that they could run all the way out. And uh, so we are looking forward to that. And uh, glad to see many of our minister brothers in. I uh, can't ever think of his name here, the missionary, Brother Humes. Sister Humes, is that you sitting right here? And the little ones, we're glad to have them a missionary. Other ones, Brother Pat. Brother uh, uh, Dalton and all oh, just so many. Brother Beeler and see Brother Collins just a few moments ago. And oh, it would be kind of hard to call them all, but we're very happy to have you in the house of the Lord tonight. This great, precious Brother Neville sitting behind me here to pray with me while we are going to teach the Word. Charlie, glad to see you and Sister Nellie here tonight. The little ones. This is, and Bible teaching is usually a very, yes, Brother Welch, I just was looking for you. I see you sitting back there now. <clears throat> Bible teaching is usually a little treacherous, a little, you know, kind of walking out on the thin ice, we call it. But we just, feel that maybe at this point and at this time it might be good to kind of bring the, the church to what I think to a, a complete uh, understanding positionally of what we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And sometimes I think that preaching is a wonderful thing but I believe sometimes Brother Beeler that Teaching goes beyond that. And kindly, especially to the church. Now, preaching usually catches the sinner, brings him under condemnation by the word. But teaching places the man positionally what he is. Amen. And <clears throat> we can never rightly be able to have faith until positionally. We know what we are. Amen. Now, if the United States of this fair land here sent me over to Russia as an ambassador of this nation to Russia, then if they have officially sent me to Russia, all the power that the United States has is behind me. My word is just the same as the United States. If I have been recognized as an ambassador. Amen. And then if God has sent us to be his ambassadors, all the power that's in heaven, all Amen. that God is, all of his angels and all of his power stands behind our words. Amen. If we are correctly and ordained, sent messengers to the people. God has to honor the Word. 
For he has so solemnly written that whatever you bind on earth, that will I bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, that will I loose in heaven. Now I give unto thee the keys to the kingdom. All such great promises he's given the church. And I am... Um, after the other day, if many of you, I suppose, are here this morning to hear as I tried to, in my humble, simple way, to explain the, the vision that I saw of heaven, I would by no means ever try to doubt anything that anyone ever told me that God told them. I believe it even if I didn't see it in the Scripture, I would still uh, want to believe that brother's word. I, I might just stay right along with the Bible, but still I would believe it. Maybe brother just misunderstood it some way, that he might have just got it mixed up a little. And still I would believe he, he'd be my brother. And if there's anything that burns within my heart, and I hope it never leaves in my years to come that I'll never forget what happened last Sunday morning as a week. Amen. It has done something to me that's revolutionized my life. I, I do not fear. I, I have not one fear of death. Death has no fear at all. And it, it doesn't for you if you just understood now, maybe if you'd have to have the experience to know it because there's no way to explain it, you cannot find words because it doesn't lay in the English uh, dictionary or no other dictionary because it's in an eternity. No yesterday, no tomorrow. It's all present tense. And it's no, uh, I feel pretty good in an hour from now, I don't feel so well, and another hour I feel good again. It's present tense all the time. Never a cease, just that glorious peace, something. And there can be no sin, there can be no jealousy, there can be no sickness, there, there can be nothing ever reach that heavenly shore. And if I may have the privilege of saying this, which maybe I do not. If I do not, then I pray God forgive me. But if I have the privilege, and it was, that God let me be caught up to see something, I would refer to the first heavens. And then I believe one in the Bible by the name, I believe it was Paul, that was caught up into the third heaven. Yes. And if it was this glorious in the first heavens, what does that third heavens hold? Amen. No wonder he couldn't speak of it for 14 years. He said he did not know whether he was in body or out of body. With that great apostle, not to share his... His, his office or not to try to make ourselves anything like he was. But I can say with him, I don't know whether it was in this body or out of the body. Only thing, it was just as real as I'm looking at you. And I've always wondered about if I'd pass by I'd see a little cloud floating by a spirit and say, there goes brother and sister. That's Charlie and Nellie. That's brother and sister Spencer going there. That always puzzled me. If my eyes is in the grave uh, decaying, rottening, if my ears is not here to hear anymore, and if my blood is all gone back and they've been bombed it and it's in the waters or in the ground and 
my mental faculties, my brain cells are all gone, then how would I be any more than just a spirit floating around? That wearied me. How would I like to say, Hello, Brother Pat. Oh, so glad to see you. Hello, Brother Neville. I would like to see you. But I thought, well, if I don't have anything to see with, any mouth to speak with, it's rotten. It's dust. How would I be able to say, Hello, Brother Pat. Hello, Brother Neville, or so forth. Hi, Charlie. But now I know that that's wrong. For it is written in the Scriptures, which I say it's not contrary. For if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one already waiting. Another tabernacle that has eyes, ears, lips, mental faculties. If this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, it has a body that I can feel, can yes. talk. And now it comes to me just now that Moses had been dead and in an un- unmarked grave for 800 years. And Elisha had went to heaven 500 years before, but on Mount Transfiguration they were found talking yeah. with Jesus. After Samuel had been dead for at least three to five years, and the witch of Endor called him up, and she fell on her face, and she said, You have deceived me because you are Saul yourself. She said, Because I see gods. She was a heathen, you see. I see gods rising up. And Saul couldn't see him yet, and he said, What does he look like? Describe him to me. said, He's thin, and he has a mantle over his shoulder. said, That's Samuel the prophet. Bring him here before me. And I want you to notice that Samuel had not lost any of his personality. He was still a prophet. He told Saul exactly what would happen the next day. So you see, death does not completely diminish us as we weep and wail and lament at the grave. It only changes our dwelling place. It takes us from a place to, what is age? If I live one more hour... I'll outlive a many 16-year-old person. I'll outlive a many 5-year-old person. Age is nothing. We're just set here for a purpose. To do something. Well, now many of these little pretty-faced mothers sitting here, some of them 60 or 70 years old, would say, Well, what have I done, Brother Branham? You've raised your children. You've done what you were supposed to do. Maybe some old dad sitting here said, Well, I've hired the fields. I've done this. I never preach. But you did just what God sent for you to do. There's a place for you. Speaking to an old doctor yesterday, one of my doctor friend's buddies, 80-something years old, And his sister-in-law is here at the church tonight. And she's been just a teeny bit worried about him. And I went to see him. And as soon as I began to talk to him, he brightened up, told me about a hunting trip he'd taken many years ago up in Colorado in the very same country I hunt at. Just as brilliant and bright. And I said, Doctor, how long have you been practicing? He said, when you were nursing. And way down, I said, many a time, he said, I've practiced taking my buggy. I've put my saddlebags over my horse. I've tucked the little satchel. 
And I walked and I said, yes, down along the creek banks, two o'clock in the morning with your flashlight, trying to find the house where a little child had a tummy ache or mother and labor pains. So that's right. And I said, you know, doctor, I believe across this dividing line here between mortal and immortality, God has a place for good old doctors that serve like that. Great tears come in his eyes. He started crying. He reached up his feeble hands and said, Brother, I hope so. Across the land. God judges a man's soul. What he is. Then I give him this satisfying scripture. Many times plying through those dark, muddy fields at night trying to help somebody. Maybe never get a penny for it, but it's all right. I said, Jesus said in the Scripture, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And that is true. And tonight we want to set the church in these three lessons, if God permits, how and what to look to, what we are. We're going to begin at the first chapter of the book, of Paul's letter to Ephesus. And we're going to take the three first chapters in our next three studies, trying to get a chapter a evening if we can. Tonight, Wednesday and next Sunday morning. Ephesians, the first chapter. Now, as we study together, I'd like to say this, that this book of Ephesians perfectly parallels the Old Testament Joshua. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, now remember, if we happen to get just a little off to your teaching, just forgive us and bear with us a while. Before we open it, let's ask Him to help us as we bow our heads. Lord, we are approaching Thy holy and sacred writ, which it is more secure than all the heavens and earth. For we read in this word called the Bible that both heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never fail. Then upon this solemn hour that I come to this pulpit tonight before the purchase of your blood, these precious darling mortals that set here tonight grasping for every little hope that they can to hold on for that life that is to come. May it be so sufficient tonight that every believer here will see his position. And everyone who has not yet come into this great fellowship will press the kingdom, Lord, and knock at the door until the keeper opens the door. Grant it, Lord. We are reading in here where uh, this Bible is of no private interpretation. God forbid that I, your servant, or any other servant would ever try to put their own interpretation Amen. to the Word. Let us just read it and believe it the way it is written. And especially we shepherds of the flocks, we pastors who someday will gather yonder in that glorious land with the little flocks and We'll stand in the presence of the Lord Jesus and we'll see that generation come up of Paul and of Peter and of Luke and Mark and Matthew and all of them and see them judged there with their groups. God grant that I can lay ten million trophies at your feet. While I humbly crawl up and lay my hands upon your precious feet and say, Lord, they are yours. Oh, God, 
Fill us freshly with thy spirit and with thy love and thy goodness. And may we, as the poet has expressed in the song many years ago, Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power until all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. And ever since by faith I saw that stream thy flowing wounds supplied, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Then in a nobler, sweeter song he goes on to say, I'll sing thy power to save when this poor lispering, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave. Then the grave does not hold any death for your children. It's only a resting place or a hiding place where this corruption will put on incorruption. May we tonight see this, Lord, plainly as it is given to us in the Word. Give us understanding and place us, Lord, at our post of duty that we might serve faithfully until you come. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, the book of Ephesians, as I was just saying, I, to my opinion, is one of the greatest books of the New Testament. It leaves us on where Calvinism runs out on one limb and Armenianism runs out on the other limb, but... The book of Ephesians draws it together and positionally places the church. Now, I typed it with Joshua. If you notice, Israel was brought up out of Egypt and the three stages of their journey. One stage was leaving Egypt. The next stage was the wilderness. And the next stage was Canaan. Now, Canaan does not represent the age of the millennium. It only represents the age of the overcomer, the dispensation of overcoming. Because in Canaan, they killed and burnt and took cities. And there will be no death in the millennium. But another thing that it does... It brings up justification by faith after they believed the Moses and left Egypt. Sanctification to following under the pillar of fire and the atonement of the sacrificial lamb in the wilderness. And then entering into a land that had been promised. Now what is the land promised to the New Testament believer? The promise is the Holy Spirit. For it shall come to pass in the last days, Joel 2.28, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy upon my hands, maids and my maidservants. Will I pour out of my Spirit and they shall prophesy? I'll show wonders in the heavens above and in the earth, pillars of fire and smoke and vapor. And Peter said on the day of Pentecost after taking his text and preaching, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, to remit, to forgive, to take away all back trespasses. Did you notice Joshua, before they crossed Jordan, Joshua said, Go through the midst of the camp and clean your clothes and sanctify every one of you and let no man come at his wife. For within three days you'll see the glory of God. See, it is a, it is a process of getting ready to inherit the promise. 
Now the promise to Israel was God gave Abraham the promise of the land of Palestine and it was to be their possession forever. And it was to always remain in this land. Now, they come three stages coming to this promised land. Now watch, it's perfectly typed in the New Testament. Now if this, as I've said, disagrees with some of the thinking of yours, some of you precious Nazarene people, Church of God and so forth, don't let it hurt, but just watch it close and watch the types. Watch and see if every place don't hit just perfect. There was three stages of the journey and there's three stages of this journey. For we are justified by faith, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, forsaking the land of Egypt, come out and then are sanctified to the offering of His blood, <coughs> washed from our sins and become pilgrims and sojourners, claiming that we are seeking a land, a city that's coming, our a promise. So did Israel in the wilderness, sojourners, no place to rest, traveling night after night, following the pillar of fire, but finally Come to the promised land where they settle down. That's where the believer comes. He comes first to recognition that he's a sinner. Then he is separated by the waters, the washing of the water by the blood, and or the washing of the water by the word, rather, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, then being justified by faith, he becomes a partaker and a peace with God through Christ, baptized into the name of Jesus Christ to omit him into the journey. You get it? Into the journey, then he becomes a sojourner and a pilgrim. He's on his journey to what? A promise that God made. Israel had not yet received the promise, but they were on their journey. And without raising, please do understand, that's where you, the Nazarene and pilgrim holiness and so forth fell because Israel, when they come to the spot of Kadesh Barnea, when the spies went over and said, the land is great, but some of them come back and said, we can't take it because the cities are walled up and so forth. But Joshua and Caleb stood out and said, we're more than able to take it. Because of their already signed up, documented statements, they believed in two works of grace, justification and sanctification, and could not move any farther. And listen, that whole generation perished in the wilderness. But two that went over into the promised land and brought back the evidence that it was a goodly land and we were more than able to take it because it was God's promise. Then instead of the people going on receiving the Holy Spirit, speaking with tongues, receiving the power of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, signs, wonders, miracles, they felt that it would break down their tradition of doctrine. And what happened to it? Perished in the land. That's right. But the believers, the Caleb and Joshua outfit that was going on to the promise, they moved on over into the land and took the land and Settle down in the land as a possession. And we never stop at justification, sanctification. Let's go on to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's not stop at a believing on the Lord Jesus being baptized. Let's not stop because He cleaned us up from a life of sin. But now we press down into a position to a promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. For Peter said on the day of Pentecost, 
For the promise is unto you and to your children and to them it's far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So Ephesus here sets us like Joshua positioning. Do you notice Joshua after crossing over the land and taking the land then he divided the land. Ephraim here. Manasseh here. And this one year, Gad year, Benjamin year, he divided the land. And notice, oh, this just burns our hearts. Each one of those Hebrew mothers giving birth to those children, she spoke the very place in her labor pains where they would be positioned in the promised land. Oh, it's a great study. We could only go into it in details, which would take hours after hours. Someday when we get our church fixed, I'd just like to come and take a solid month or two. Just stay right in it. Watch when they... Each one of those mothers, when she called out, Ephraim. When she was in labor, positionally placed him where his feet was setting in oil. Just exactly every one of them. Wherever they were at. And Joshua, not knowing this, but by inspiration, led of the Holy Spirit, after being into the promised land, give each man his promise, exactly what the Holy Spirit promised through the birth back there. How that God has set some in the church through the labor pains. Oh, they get tremendous sometimes. When a church is groaning under the persecution of the outside world, believing on the Lord Jesus that the promise of the Holy Ghost is just as real to us as it was to Pentecost. How they groan and cry under labor pains. But when they are born and positionally born into the kingdom of God, then the Holy Ghost has set in the church some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, some evangelists. Then He's given to their speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, knowledge, wisdom, gifts of healing, all kinds of miracles where the church is now. This is my purpose of doing this. The church is always trying to take somebody else's corner. But don't do that. You can never raise corn in Ephraim's corner if you're Manassas. (laughs) You've got to take your place in Christ. Positionally take it. Oh, it gets deep and rich when we get in here. How that God puts one in the church to speak with tongues. Another. Now we have been taught many times we all have to speak with tongues. That's wrong. We all got to do it. No, we don't. They all didn't do one thing. Each one was, each lamb was provided and uh, divvied up by inspiration. And each one, I could take the scriptures and show to you exactly that he put them in the place where they were supposed to be. Amen. Positionally, how that the two half tribes is to stay across the river, how that their mothers cried that in their birth, and how that each place was supposed to be. And now, after you're in, that don't mean that you're out free from war. You still have to fight for every inch of ground you stand on. So see, Canaan did not represent the great heaven. Because it's war and troubles and killings and fightings and so forth. But it did represent this. That it must be a perfect walk. There's where the church is failing today. On that walk. Do you know that even your own behavior can knock somebody else out of getting healed? Your misbehavior of unconfessed sins of you believers can cause this church to bitterly fail and at the day of the judgment you'll be responsible for every bit of it. 
Or you say, now, wait a minute, Brother Branham. Well, that's the truth. Think of it. Joshua, after he crossed over into the land, God gave him the promise that, just think, to fight an entire campaign without losing a man, without even getting a scratch, without having to have a nurse or a first aid or a band. God said, the land's yours. Go fight. Think of fighting a campaign and there's no Red Cross around at all. There's nobody going to get hurt. And they slayed the Amorites and the Hatites, but there wasn't one hurt among any of them until sin come in the camp. And when Achan took that Babylonian garment and that gold wedge and hid it under his camp, then the next day they lost 16 men. Joshua said, Stop! Stop! Wait a minute, there's something wrong. Something's wrong. Yeah, we're going to call seven days of fast. God made us a promise. There will be nothing hurt us. Our enemies will fall at our feet. And there's something wrong here. Something went wrong somewhere. Because we got 16 dead men laying here. They're Israelite brothers and they're dead. Why did they die? Innocent man. Because one man stepped out of the line. You see the reason this needs to be taught? The church lining up. Lining up with the Word of God. Lining up with God. Lining up with each other. Walking perfectly upright, soberly before all men, fearing God. Because one man stole a garment and done something that he should not done, took the life of 16 men. I think it was 16, maybe more. I believe it was 16 men that was dead. Joshua called said, there's something wrong. God made the promise... And something's wrong. We bring the sick up before us and they fail to be healed. We need to call a solemn fast. Call an assembly. Something's wrong somewhere. God made the promise. God's got to stick to that promise and He will do it. And he called a fast and they found out the castle lots and Achan confessed it and they killed Achan family and all and burnt their ashes and left it there for a memorial and Joshua went right on through the battles taking everything without a scratch or a wound. There you are. One day he had needed a little time. Extra time, the sun was going down. The man couldn't fight very good at night time. Joshua, that great warrior, anointed of God, positionally placed into the land, like Ephesians to the new church, possessing the land, taking it over. He needed some time. So he said, Son, stand still. And she stood still for about 12 hours until he took the land. See? See? Now the book of Ephesians place us positionally in Christ what they was in the Holy Land. We are placed not in the Holy Land, but in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now let us read just a word. See how perfect the church is. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God... Oh, I like that. God made him an apostle. No elders laid hands on him. No bishop sent him anywhere. But God called him and made him an apostle. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, sanctified ones, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful... In Jesus Christ. Watch how he addresses this. 
This is not to the unbelievers. This is to the church. It's called to the called out ones, the sanctified and called ones that are in Christ Jesus. Now, if you want to know how we get in Christ Jesus, if you turn to 1 Corinthians 12, it said, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. How? Baptized by what? The Holy Ghost. Not by water baptism, you Church of Christ people. But by one, capital S-P-I-R-I-T, by one Spirit. Not by one handshake, by one letter. Not by one sprinkle, but by one Spirit. We are all baptized into one body, our possession the land that God give us to live in, the Holy Ghost, just as He give Canaan to the Jews, He's give us the Holy Spirit. By one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. You get it? Amen. Now He's talking to the spiritual Canaanites. Amen. Israel, the spiritual Israel who has possessed the land. Oh, aren't you glad you come out of Egypt's garlic? (laughs) Aren't you glad you're out of the wilderness? And remember, they had to eat manna, angels' food out of heaven, until they crossed over into the land. And when they crossed over into the land, the manna ceased to fall. They were fully matured then, and they eat the old corn of the land. Amen. Now, now that you're not babies anymore, now that you're not desiring the sincere milk of the gospel, that you don't have to be babied and patted and persuaded to come to church, now that you're real fully matured Christians, you're ready to eat strong meats now. Amen. You're ready to come into something, he said. You're ready to understand something that's deep and rich. Oh, we'll get into it directly. And oh, it's been hidden since the foundation of the world. He said, now that you've come into this, I'm addressing this to you. Not to those who've just left Egypt. Not to those who are still in the journey. But to those who are in the promised land. That has received the promise. How many has received the promise of the Holy Ghost? Aren't you glad that you're in the land? Over here now eating the old corn. Eating the strong things of God. Got a clear understanding. Your your spiritual mind is all unmuddled up. You know exactly who He is. You know exactly what He is. You know exactly where you're going. You know exactly all about it. You know in whom you have believed and persuaded He's able to keep that which you've committed to Him against the day? Oh, that's the one. That's who Paul's talking to now. Listen close. Now watch. The faithful in Christ Jesus. Now let me have the church to repeat that. How do we get into Christ? By joining church. No. By putting our name on a book. No. By being baptized by immersing. No. How do we get into Christ? By one's Holy Spirit. Are we all baptized into one promise, the body? Amen. And are partakers of all that belongs into the land? Amen. Amen. Oh, I, I like that. If it wasn't a horse, I could shout. <laughs> ah, when I get in this land, it's mine. I'm home now. I'm in Canaan. I'm subject to anything God wants to use me for. I'm walking on holy ground. Hallelujah. A child of the King. Amen. 
all robed and ready. I've come out of Egypt, come up to the promised land, stood the trials, passed over Jordan into this blessed promise. Hallelujah. Oh, how did I get it? By one spirit. The same way Paul got it. Acted on me the same way it did on him. Same way it did on you. Amen. By one spirit. We are all baptized. Hallelujah. Not sprinkled. Just a little sprinkle of it. Feel pretty good, but immersed under. All oh, made to be swim under. In the Holy Ghost. That's the promise. Our Ephesians, our Joshua, which is the Holy Spirit. Joshua means Jesus, Savior, Joshua, meaning the Holy Spirit representing it in the spiritual as that was in the natural, that He is our great warrior. Amen. He's our great leader. As God was with Joshua, so is God in the Holy Spirit moving us about. And when sin comes in the camp, the Holy Spirit demands a halt. Amen. What's wrong here in this church? Something's wrong. Oh, can't you see how we got too many sons of Kish now? Too many Saul's coming from seminaries and theological schools and going out and teaching this perverse things as the Bible said they would do, seemingly not having the faith separating themselves from you, having no fellowship with you and so forth. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof from such turn away. They don't know where they come from. They can't give any reason. I say this from Brother Booth Cliver and a friend of mine. If there's anything that's an ill, illegitimate, un-God created, anything in the world is a mule. A mule is the lowest of all things. He is a... He don't know what he is. He cannot produce himself no more. A mule cannot be bred to another mule and become a mule. He's finished. He don't know where his papa come from, neither does he know his mama. For he is a little, a little donkey and a mare horse. God never did that. Don't you lay such as that unto God. God never done that. God said everything shall bring forth of its kind. Amen. Yes, sir. But a mule is a... Um, his papa was a donkey and his mama was a mare horse. So he don't know what he does belong to. He, he, he's a horse trying to be a mule or a mule or, or he's a horse trying to be a donkey, donkey trying to be a horse. He don't know where he does belong. And he is a hard-headed thing there is in the world. You can never put a bit of trust to him. And that's the way a lot of people are in church. They don't know who their papa is. They don't know who their mama is. The only thing they know, they're either Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecostal or something. They don't know where they come from. And an old donkey, you can just holler at him as much as you want to holler at him. And he'll stand there and stick them big ears out and look. You can preach to them all night long and they don't know a bit more when they left than what they did when they come in. Now that's just right. I don't mean to be rude, but I want to tell you the truth. But there's one thing they can do. They're good workers. Oh, they just work, 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 work. That puts me in the mind of a bunch of these Armenians that's always trying to work their way into heaven. That's right, a mule. All the ladies aid society and this chicken supper for the pay the preacher. And we got to have this dance and this social. It's just work, 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 work. And they, what are they working for? Ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They stick out their ears and don't know where they belong. What do you mean? What did all this, what do you mean the Holy Ghost? I don't ever hear nothing about it. Oh, you must be some kind of fanatic. See, they don't know who Papa was or who Mama was either. 
And you have to beat them on everything you do. Beat here, beat there, beat here, beat there. That's right, an old mule. But I tell you, you don't have to do that by a real thoroughbred horse. Just crack the whip over him one time and brother, he's gone. He knows what he's doing. Oh, how fine it is to ride a thoroughbred. How nice is it? Come on, boy. Oh, man. You better hold tight. He'll leave the saddle in the air. That's the way it is with real thoroughbred Christians. Hallelujah. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Gone. Just as quick as they can get to the water, they're gone. They can't rest day and night until they receive the Holy Ghost. Why? You know a Christian knows who his papa was? See, it takes two to make a birth. That's right. Papa and mama. The mule don't know which was papa, which was mama. But we know who papa and mama was. For we were born of the written word of God confirmed by the Spirit. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, If you will repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And brother, a real born-again Christian, oh my, he's spirited as soon as he gets the word, he receives the Holy Ghost. Ask him something then. He knows where he's standing. Do you believe in divine healing? Amen. You believe in the second coming? Amen. Ask the mule then. The mule religion. Mm, I don't know. Dr. Jones said one time, Oh, there, go on at your stall. See? Oh, they don't know. Well, I tell you, my church is not sure of it. Oh, brother, but a born again man and woman is just as sure of the coming of the Lord Jesus. They're just as sure they got the Holy Ghost as there is a Holy Ghost to be given. Ah, Jesus said to the woman at the well, We worship in this mountain and the Jews worship at Jerusalem. He said, Woman, hear my words. The hour is coming and now is when the Father seeketh those that will worship Him in the Spirit and the truth. Thy word is the truth. And every man that will read the Bible and believe every word that Bible says and follow its instructions and receive the same Holy Ghost that they received, the same way they received it, same results they received it, same power they got when they received it. He knows who his papa and mama was. He knows he's washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, born of the Spirit, filled with God's unction. He knows where he's standing. Sure, he's in Canaan. He knows where he come from. That's the way it is with a real Christian. Ask him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Amen, brother. (laughs) Stand the other day by an old saint, 92 years old, talking to her 80-year-old pastor. I said, Grandma, just as bright as she could be, she said, yes, my son. I said, how long has it been since you received the Holy Ghost? She said, glory to God, about 60 years ago I got it. (laughs) Now, she'd been a mule. She'd said, now, wait a minute. I was confirmed and sprinkled when I was, well, certain. And they take me into the church and I took my letter over to some home. They don't even know where they belong. But she know where her birthright come from. She was there when it happened. She was born of the water and of the Spirit. She knowed, and the water through the washing of the water by the Word takes the Word. Now watch how this is addressed. To those that are in Christ Jesus. Paul, now remember, I'm taking a long time. I ain't going to get through this chapter. But I hurry. You like it? Amen. It tells us where we are. But we can't do it in just one night. We need a month or two of this. 
Yes, Every do. night, just go right to yes, it, word yes. by word. Amen. Go back and yes. bring it up in the histories and yes. lay it right yes. out, word by word, and show Amen. you that it's the truth. Yes. Now let me read that verse quickly again. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, not the will of man, to the saints which are in Ephesus, and conjunction to the faithful in Christ Jesus means they've been called out, separated, and I've been baptized by the Holy Spirit and are in Christ Jesus. I'm addressing this epistle to you, my beloved ones. Oh, I think of Paul over there with them right now. Oh, how happy. That little old apostle had his head chopped off down there. I stood by the place where they chopped his head off. But oh, his head's on and that new body can never be chopped off again. And he's standing over there with them this very minute. The same apostle wrote this and said to you that are in Christ Jesus, by one spirit we are all baptized into this one body. I watch. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all... Oh. <laughs> Amen. Do you hear that, Charlie? Has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, not just some to the apostles and some to this, but He's blessed us with all Amen. spiritual blessings. The same Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost is the same Holy Ghost here tonight. The same Holy Ghost that made Mary shout and speak with tongues and have a wonderful time and rejoice and the things that she did is the same Holy Ghost here tonight. The same Holy Ghost that let Paul and that old ship where it looked like his waterlogged and is gone and 14 days and nights, no moon and stars, looked out there and never wave had a devil on it glancing and in his teeth and said, I'll sink you, old boy, now. I got you now. While Paul went out to have a little prayer, there stood an angel and said, Don't you fear, Paul. <laughs> this old ship's going to be wrecked up on a certain island. Go ahead and eat your supper. It's all right now. Here he come with them chains on his little arms, dragging him on his feet and said, Be of a good courage, man. For the God, the angel of God, whose servant I am, stood by me and said, Paul, don't you fear? That same Holy Ghost is here tonight. Amen. Same Amen. Spirit of God ministering to us the same spiritual blessings. Amen. Bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Oh, let's stop just one more minute here. In heavenly places. Not just not out anywhere, but in heavenly places. We are a symbol in heavenly. It means that the position of the believer, that if I'm prayed up, you're prayed up, or the church is prayed up, and we're ready for the message, and we have assembled ourselves together as saints called out, baptized with the Holy Ghost, Filled with God's blessings, called, elected, set together in heavenly places. Now, we are heavenlies in our souls. Amen. Our Amen. spirits has brought us into a heavenly atmosphere. Oh, brother. There you are. A heavenly atmosphere. Oh, what could happen tonight? What could happen tonight? If we would be sitting here in a heavenly atmosphere Praise and the Holy Spirit moving over every heart that's been regenerated and become a new creature in Christ Jesus, all sins under the blood in perfect worship with our hands up to God and our hearts lifted, setting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Worshiping together in the heavenly places. Did you ever set one? Oh, I have set till I would weep for joy and say, God, never let me leave here. 
Just heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Blessing us with what? Divine healing, foreknowledge, revelation, visions, powers, tongues, interpretations, wisdom, knowledge, all the heavenly blessings and joy unspeakable and full of glory. Every heart filled with the Spirit, walking together, setting together in heavenly places. Not one evil thought among us, not one cigarette smoke, not one short dress, not one this, that, or the other, not one evil thought. Nobody got anything against one another. Everybody speaking in love and harmony. Everybody with one accord in one place. Then suddenly there come from heaven a sound like a rushing mighty wind. There you are. Has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Then the Holy Spirit might fall upon somebody and say, Thus saith the Lord, go to a certain place and do a certain thing. Watch it happen just like that. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, do a certain thing at a certain place. Watch it happen like that. Blessed us together in all heavenly blessings and heavenly places. Watch. According as He has chosen us. Did we choose Him or He chose us? He chose us when? The night that we accepted Him? Chosen according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy without blame before Him in denominations. In love. When did God choose us? When did God choose you that's got the Holy Ghost? When did He choose you? Before the foundation of the world. By His foreknowledge He foresaw you and know that you love Him. And before there was a foundation of the world, He chose you. Amen. And sent Jesus that He might be the propitiation of your sins to call you to reconciliation to Himself to love. Oh, wish we had just a few more minutes time. Let me, before we go any farther, go back. Genesis 1.26. I'll pick it up Wednesday. When God made man, before He made man, He called Himself L-E-L-L-E-L-H-L-R. Elohim. The word means in the Hebrew the self-existence all by Himself. Nothing existed before Him. He was all the existence He ever was. Self-existence one. El Elohim means the all-sufficient, all-powerful, Almighty self existence one. Oh. But in Genesis 2, when he made man, he said, I am Y A H U J U V U H Yahuwah Jehovah. What did it mean? I am the all existence one who has created something all for myself. To be a son of mine or a temporary or an amateur little one of mine. (laughs) Why? He gave man. Jehovah means that He gave man to be an amateur God. Because He is Father God. And He made a man an amateur God, so He isn't self-existence anymore. He exists with His family. (laughs) Hallelujah. 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 Elo, Elo, Elohim. Now, now He is Jehovah. Jehovah meaning the one who exists with His family. Now, God made man to be 
the predominant over all the earth. He had dominion. And the earth was man's dominion. Is that Scripture? Amen. Then if that's his domain, he was God over the earth. Amen. He could speak and it would be so. He could speak this and it would yeah, be so. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. There he is. God Jehovah. The one who once existed in self-existence, but now exists with his family and his little ones with him. Amen. There you are. Hallelujah. Now read that. We'll get into it Wednesday night when we got more time. We just about fifteen more minutes, and we'll. I thought I'd get to a certain spot here, but uh, we won't. So where we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. All right. Now. When was we called to be servants of God? When was Arbel Neville called to be a servant of God? Oh, my. This staggers me. I tell you, let's get some scriptures. I want you to get First Peter uh, one twenty, and uh, Pat get Revelation seventeen eight, and uh, I'll get Revelation thirteen. Now we want to listen here. You want to know when God called you to be a Christian. Oh, I love this. This man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. All right, Brother Neville, you got First Peter 120? 120. Read 119 and 120. Listen to this. One nineteen and twenty. Yes. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. When was he foreordained? Before uh, the foundation of the world. Uh, Brother yeah. Pat, read yeah. Revelation seventeen eight for me. Beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Who's going to be deceived? Who's going to be deceived by this religious person like Saul was? That was just so cunning and so perfect to it would deceive thee what? Very e If possible. If possible. All right. Revelation 13, 8. Let me read it for you. And all that dwell upon the earth shall... All that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. When was our names put in the Lamb's book of life? When the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. When God was Jehovah El, 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 Elohim, the self-existence one, just like Amen. one great big diamond. And He could not be nothing else, but inside of this diamond, His attributes was a Savior. Amen. In this attribute, on the inside of him was a healer. Hallelujah. Well, there was nothing to save and nothing to heal. But his attributes produced it. So then before the foundation of the world, when he knew that the great display in here of him, that the, he would be a savior, that he would come and be made flesh and dwelt among us, and he knew by his stripes would be healed. He slayed the Lamb on His book before the foundation of the world and wrote your name on Amen. that Amen. book before the foundation of the world. Oh. Amen. 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 Listen to this. Predestination looks back to foreknowledge. I mean election. Election looks back to foreknowledge and predestination looks to destiny. Don't forget that. That election looks back. Here, here it is. 
I was a cocklebur. I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies, born among sinners. Father and mother and all my whole family sinners. I was a cocklebur. But all of a sudden I become a wheat grain. <laughs> How did it happen? Uh, that, what is that? Election. God before the foundation of the world elected that the cocklebur was to become a grain of wheat. Now I know I'm a grain of wheat because I'm saved. How do I do it? Look back and see that He predestinated it. Long time ago, by foreknowledge, He seen that I would love Him. So He made a propitiation through His own Son that through Him I might become from a cockaburr to a grain of wheat. Now, where am I at now? I'm saved. I'm walking in the grace of God. What does predestination look? To destiny. Where will He take me to and where am I going? <laughs> That's got gotcha. you. There you are. Now, let's read just a little farther. And then we'll have to close pretty shortly. According as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption, predestinated unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His Will. What did he do? He, by foreknowledge, foresaw us, knowing that he was a savior, self existence. There was no angels, no nothing, just God Elo Elohim, the self existence one, nothing but him alone. But in him was a savior. Amen. Well, what's he going to say? There's nothing lost. Knowing that, then he know that this great attribute in him would project something out down there that he could save. Then when he did that, by foreknowledge, he looked down and he saw everyone that would accept it. Amen. And then by doing so, he said to save that the only way I can do it will be come down myself and be made flesh and take the sin of the man upon him and die for him that I might be the one that's worshipped because he is God, the object of worship. Amen. Then he came down and taken upon himself and while he did that, he did that, that he might save you who wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Do you see what I mean? By foreknowledge, Amen. the infinite God, who knows all things, saw the Lamb, and He slayed the Lamb before the foundation of the world. And He put your name on the Lamb's book of life, and He seen the deceitfulness of Satan, what He would do. So He put your name on there, and He said that the Antichrist would be so religious, so good, yes. such a fine fellow, yes. such a smart man. Yes such a religious man, that he would deceive that very elected if it was possible, but it isn't impossible because her names were foreordained before the foundation of the world. By election, he chose them, and by predestination, they know where they are going. There you are. Now, who could doubt that? That's what Paul said. That's Paul's scripture. That's Paul's writing. That's what he taught his church. The church, positionally, before the foundation of the world, when God in his labor pain was bringing forth, bringing forth you, knowing what you would do, he positionally placed you into his own body. Amen. To be a housewife. To be a farmer, to be a preacher, to be a prophet, to be this or to be that. He placed you positionally. Then, when we have come from the garlic lands of Egypt through sanctification and baptized into the promised land, for the promise of God is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. 
Amen. Then God having predestinated the church, He said, and all the peoples there will be millions times millions that will walk very religious and be deceived. The only ones that will not be deceived will be those that have come over into the promised land who before the foundation of the world had their names put on the Lamb's book of life and has come over into the promised land and enjoying it. Amen. Amen. Many people are afraid you're going to act funny. Many people are afraid the Holy Ghost will make you do something you, you'll sh- be ashamed of people. Many people are afraid they'll cry and their sweetheart will see them crying. Or mama or your neighbor or your boss will see you. Let me tell you about a man one time before closing. That was a man named David. And when the ark of God had been down in the Philistine land and had come across, pulled by ark, old oxes are pulling them. When David saw that ark coming, he had a little gown on him. He ran out there and kicked his feet in the air and jumped around and screamed and jumped and danced and jumped and danced. And him the king of Israel. And his wife looked out of a window and saw him acting so strange. She despised him. Why, she must have said the idiot. Look at him out there the way he's acting. Throwing his feet up in the air and jumping around and acting like that. Why, he must be crazy. And that night when she come in, she said, in words like this, Why, you've embarrassed me. Why, you the king, my husband, out there doing like that, acting like that. David said, tomorrow I'll do better than that. <laughs> yes, sir. He said, don't you know I was dancing unto the Lord? <laughs> he crossed over. He was in the land of the promise. He would lost all self-styles and muck of the world. He was so happy to know that the ark was coming into his own city. No, I'll tell you. Some people's afraid to receive the Holy Ghost. Afraid that they might speak with tongues. They're afraid that somebody would say, now he's one of them tongues guys. They're afraid to come to the church to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because they're ashamed of it. Oh. Somebody said I'd have to recall my tapes because I'd preached it, been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I ain't recalling them. I'm making more. Amen. That's Amen. right. That, making more. That is the Bible. If they don't like what we did yesterday, just watch what we're going to do tomorrow. That's the thing to do. Just keep on going. There's no end to it because it is of the Lord. It's God. You know what God did? God looked down out of the heaven and said, David, you're a man after my own heart. Amen. David wasn't ashamed. He was a servant of the Lord. He loved the Lord. And he was so happy, so overjoyed, though he didn't think about human prestige. You see, as I said in my sermon this morning, we are so much afraid that we want a Saul to teach us. We want a Saul from some seminary to tell us how we must do our religion and how we must do it. That is on the other side of the uh, Jordan. This side, the Holy Spirit leads. Over here, you're out of that muck. Over here, you don't care what they think. Over here, you're dead and your life is hid in Christ's suit uh, and sealed by the Holy Ghost. You don't care. You're living in Canaan. You can stand good corn. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're bound for the promised land. I remember standing under Brother Collins some 30 years ago when this church wasn't built yet. There was a little tent meeting sitting here on the corner, my first meeting. I was preaching this same gospel, same thing, the unsearchable riches of Christ, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Believing every word to be the truth, baptism of the Holy Ghost, divine healing, the powers of God, just like I preach it now. Never varied one inch from any of it. God's revealed more of it to me, so as He reveals it, I just keep bringing it on. 
He never takes away from what has been. He just keeps adding more on to it. I stood down there when about 500 people stood on the banks. Singing on Jordan, stormy banks, I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. When shall I reach that healthful shore and be forever blessed? When shall I reach and be my father's and forever rest? When they begin to sing that, I was taking a boy out into the river to baptize him out there into the name of the Lord Jesus. I said, Heavenly Fathers, I bring this boy to you upon his confession. Just a boy myself. Got the pictures of it at home. I said, when I baptize him with water, Lord, upon his confession, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you fill him with the Holy Ghost. And about that time, something let out a whirl, and here it come whirling down. The bright morning star stood there. There stood that light that you see right there on the picture. There it stood. It went around the world, way up in Canada and around. This that a mystic light appears over a local Baptist minister while he's baptizing. A few days ago when Dr. Lamza come to me and never know nothing about that and brought me a picture which brothers got it there with him now. If you got that picture, if you got the Bible with you laying there, it's in your book. All right. There was a picture of the old ancient Hebrew sign of God just the Exactly that that existed in the days of Job before the Bible was ever wrote. God and His three attributes. Not three gods. One God and three attributes. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three offices that God worked into. Not three gods. Three attributes. And there it was. That great man, Dr. Lams, the translation of the Lams of the Bible, when he said that morning, when I told him that, I said... I said, what's that sign? He said, that's God's ancient sign in the Hebrew. God, one God, and three attributes. I said, such as Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He stopped and he set his cup of coffee down. He looked at me. Gene, I believe you was there. Leo. He said, do you believe that? I said, with all my heart. He said, last night, standing in your meeting, Brother Branham, I've seen that discernment. I've never seen it before in America, in my land. He said, these American people don't even know the Bible. Only thing they know is their denomination. They don't even know where they're standing. He said, they don't know nothing. He said, but when I stood there last night, I said, now, Brother Gene, I say this with reverence and love and such. He said, I said, that must be a prophet. But when I see that you believe that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was no three gods, it was attributes, then I know that you are a prophet of God or it wouldn't be revealed to you like that. He said, that's a perfect sign. He said, I've never... He said, you're not oneness. I said, no, sir. I am not the oneness. I believe in God being the Almighty God. And the three attributes are only three offices that the one God lived in. He said, bless your heart. He said, someday you'll... Pour your blood upon the earth for that. But said, prophets always die for their cause. And I said, so let it be if it pleases my Lord. The translation of the Lams of the Bible. Oh, it is so true. How many times did I say to this church, as Samuel said before the chose Saul, before you go out and join some denomination now and get yourself all tied up in some kind of a religion, why don't you let the Holy Spirit lead you? Oh, yeah. Why don't you take God for your leader? Yes. Let Him bless you and forget about your denomination. Yes. Now, I'm not saying don't belong to any denomination of church. You belong to anyone you want to. That's up to you. But I'm telling you, as an individual, you let the Holy Spirit lead you. Yes. You read the Bible and what the Bible says do, you do it. God bless you. And I've waited a long time. I wonder if there's any here that want to come through the prayer line to be prayed for. If they are, would they raise their hands? Just one, two, three. All right. You all come right up here and stand here then if you wish to at this time. And, and uh, we'll have prayer. And then we're... I don't want you to leave yet. I want to officially do something else here just before we, we close. How many likes the study of the book of Galatians? Oh, I mean Ephesians. Now, Wednesday night, we're going to go into the seal. And then on next Sunday morning, we're going into the positionally placing the church. Oh, if 
We'll probably get in on that <clears throat> on this coming Wednesday night to you people here in Jeff. Positionally placing the church where they belong. Amen. Each one. How we're called by the adoption. God has adopted us unto the sons. We are sons by birth, adopted and positionally placed by the Holy Spirit. Look, they were ever one Hebrews when they crossed the river. But Joshua divided the land and gave each one his land according to the utterance of his yeah. mother at the birth where the Holy Spirit told him. Look at Jacob when he was dying. A prophet, blinded. Pulled his feet up into the bed. Said, come forth, you sons of Jacob. And I'll tell you where you'll be at the last day. Oh, amen. Oh, Praise the Lord. Oh, I know I may seem strange. The people may seem strange, but oh, if you only knew the, the assurance, the, the burning in the heart. Amen. Come forth and I'll tell you where you'll be in the last days. Amen. And I can take that same scripture and take the map of where the Jews are sitting today and prove to you they're exactly on the same spot that Jacob said they'd be in the last oh, days. Amen. And they never did, they haven't been on that spot until they returned since May the 7th, 1946, yeah, the night the angel of the Lord appeared to me up there and said for this mission. Amen. And I can show you that when they come back into the new land, they struck exactly the spot where Jacob said they would be sitting, and there they are sitting there today. Lord, it is. Oh, 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 my, oh, my. We're one day near home is all. You dear people, you're sick or you wouldn't be standing there just to be standing. I'm your brother. I have a commission from God to pray for the sick. Not as my, as I have power to heal, I do not. But I have power of prayer. As I said this morning, David didn't have nothing but a little slingshot. But he said, I know what it will do with the power of God on it. See? I only have a little prayer to offer for you and my hands to lay on you. But I know what faith in God will do. It's done for others. It will do for you. You believe that now as you step right up. It's a little closer to the place. And I wanted to make this so efficient if I wouldn't ask my brother to come here and anoint him with all. What do you hey, do that right. Yes, sir. I'll ask the church if you'll bow in prayer. I remember last week when I was so sick with that old cast oil, I would just to give anything if somebody would have come by and laid hands on me. If I could have had somebody come by that God had blessed and helped, I would so appreciate it. You all feel to now like I did then. You feel now you want me to do just like I want somebody to do for me then. God forbid I ever shirk the job. Let me always, whether I'm tired, where I'm weary, where I can hardly move one foot from the other, let me go. Because I'm going to meet every one of you again over in that land over there. Then you old women, older man, broken down, hair gray and falling away and falling to pieces like a rose that's opened up its little bud Shut off its petals, dropping away. You're just coming to pieces, aren't you? That's right. Just, and the only thing you want to stay together for is to shine for the glory of God. So when the enemy has grabbed you now and run out, I'm coming with the slingshot of God. With the faith, with the gift that God gave me. Here's what I said so that you'll understand it. I said, if Peter would just come in or some of them, don't say that, you don't have to pray for me. Just come in like this and say, like to this woman, say, are you Sister Sojo? What's your name? Sister Hare? Say, you're Sister Hare. You're a believer, Sister Hare. You, believe, you are a believer. And you see, you have rights to all the redemptive blessings. And I said, Sister Hare, everything will be all right. And walk away. Oh, wow. I said, I would scream, I would shout. I would say, Lord, it's just got to be. It's just got to be. And I thought, well, people think that's true. 
when I can't pray for them. Well, that's what you see what I mean. Now, I stood a lot of times and tell people and say, Oh, precious sister, will you believe it? Oh, will you believe it? Lord, oh, God, make them believe it. Have them to believe it. Oh, please, will you accept it now? That's not it. I passed from that. Amen. I passed away from that. I say this, Sister Howard, you believe her? Yes, I am. All right, Sister Howard, if you're a believer, you're an heir to everything that God has. And just take her hand. See, I believe that. I contact Sister Howard by laying my hands upon her. Jesus never said, pray for him. He said, just lay her hands on her. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's it. And she gets healed. She said, everything will be all right, Sister Howard. God bless you. Your sister, Sister Hampton, you are a believer, I'm sure. You're an heir to everything you believe in. God be with you, Sister Hampton. You go home and be well. Jesus Christ will heal you. Amen. Your sister, Lord, you're the woman you prayed for out the hospital. You are a believer then, Sister Lord. An heir to all that we have. Sister Saul, may you receive what you've asked for. You will. God will bring it to you. Amen. For the Praise the Lord. Glory that God will give yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And may the Lord God give you, G, exactly what you ask for. Have you received. And in Jesus. I know you. Praise our God. You are a believer, sister. I know you. This is your husband. He's the one I prayed for on the phone that day. I always remember that. Amen. Could go to meeting and tell us to come to meeting and the Lord and he would stand with me. Amen. The proxy you stand for someone else. What a Christian thing it is, sister. See? He was in Pastor so he stood for all. Your believer would have a right to everything that God promised. Yes. I'm his servant. Amen. And by the name of Jesus Christ, I give you what you ask. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come, brother Bill. God bless you. It's been all so good to you. You're a believer, I know you are. I believe that God will give you everything you ask for. For you are a believer. That's his service to you, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give you the desire of your heart. And you will go and receive it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Bruce, I know you. I know you. The little nurse that rubbed my back knew you. She used to be down there in the Motel J. J, Queen J, or something like that. You just stand for others. Watch your desire to live and follow For yourself tonight. Then the enemy has jerked you beyond the doctor's reach. But uh, I'm coming after you. <laughs> for the same shot. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I direct the same shot at the era of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bring me back to God. Give that to me. Give that to me. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe in it? You're hurting you and your son. Go and on your left side. Do you believe that God will give it to you, sir? Yes. And it's his servant. Lord, thank you, Lord. Give it to me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This hand perhaps has done a many hard days' work. Yes. Jesus. Come here for a purpose. Something to do. Give it the desire of his heart, Father, as I pray in Jesus' name that you will. Amen. Amen. No doubt that hurting will stop you. And hurting down there and you'll be all right. God bless you. Amen. 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 You are a believer. You are a believer. 
God and you're a, you're an heir to all these blessings. I know. And I believe I believe in your prayers, Brother Branham. I believe that yes. God will heal me. I believe that He answers your prayers. Thank you. Father, I bring this my sister into the line of uh, thank you, Jesus. You just sent her the power. And I'll bring her back to you from the enemy's clutch in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's just the way it will be. One operation. Hold on. As this young woman stands here, young in the bloom of youth, I pray for her. And a lung that would have to be taken out and should stoop the rest of her life. You are our Father. Amen. And I am the fire of prayer right at her. Lord, I straight to that moment. Amen. I send this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. May she strike that moment. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I believe it. Thank you, Jesus. Your sister, 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 sister. Back in your head, drawing. You are a believer and an heir to all God's blessings. Sister Jerry, Lord, I bring her to you with this little sling that you give me. As you give David a sling to watch his father's sheep. And if an enemy coming after the sheep, he was afraid. Grab that little sling and let lad your lines and bears. He brought the sheep back. This is a prayer of faith. You told me if I get the people to believe and be sincere. I bring Sister Dirt back tonight. I snatch her from the hands of the enemy. She's your sheep. I bring her back to the Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Lone. My blood pressure. You're a believer, are you, sister? I err to all the blessings. Then, Father God, I aim this prayer tonight as from the sling of God for Sister Loon's high blood pressure. And may the next time the physician takes the blood pressure, may he look at her and say, it's normal now. She will know what it is. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give it to her. Amen. Yes. I wish I had my danger tonight. I got one prayer for you. I will for yours. I understand. Amen. Heavenly Father. <coughs> The man that sired this boy, that he's here on earth tonight because of him, and his own son desires that his father will be brought back. Way out there in the world of sin, alcoholic. Oh Lord, I send this prayer with faith and strength and with all that I can throw it. Yeah. This little pebble. The name of the Lord Jesus, yeah. I sling it at that devil that's got yeah. that thing caught in her. And he comes safely to the fold in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless be his name. Yes, You have a desire to you want to come into the land where all the promises is. Yes, Jesus. Now, Lord, this boy is just across the river, camped on the other side, and jarred his swelling. And there's no way for him to cross except you make a way like he did for Joshua Amen. or Israel. And Father, I am asking you as your servant, let our precious brother. Oh, God, let him enter into this promised land, this promise. But on the other side is a 
was carried the other night. May I have the privilege of grabbing the toy mall and saying, May the Lamb sing, My precious brother, grant it, Lord. May he receive the promise of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, to this, my gracious brother, Thank you, Jesus. this hand has been kind to me and has good things for me that untold of. He believes and has faith. And now, as the enemy tries to grab this, my friend, sugar, and he thinks that he, he can grab this boy. But I come after him. Yes, Lord. I'm coming to bring back your own boy. Yeah, I'm slinging this rock with a zero faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I strike that sugar down to his life. Yes. Bring back your own sheep to the fold, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh. Ah, bless him, Lord. Christ and thy and thy house shall be saved. 
Did you ever hear that? Thy and thy house. Yes. Now look, if you have faith enough for salvation for yourself, can't you also have faith enough for your house? Amen. God in some way. And Lord, I pray for Sister Spencer and Brother Spencer tonight that every child, them and their children, will all be in that glorious, happy land there where there will be no sickness or no old age, no sorrow or disappointment. And all this little life here will fade into a nightmare that's passed by. May they receive this and may all of her children and her husband, all of her loved ones, and all that love her and all that she loves, may they be there with her. In Jesus' name. Amen. But you're getting broke down, Daddy. But I still do all the cooking, washing, and ordering and keep out. Just like the roads falling apart. Yes. I'm so tired all the time. They tell me. I have no mother, my stepmother, that was 90 years old. How you feel when you get old and all the time? Well, Mary, you will be too. Well, Mary, you're tired all the time. I'm tired all the time. Well, you're just ready to go to rest. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I'm tired all the time. I need rest. Yes, man. And I want to rest still. Lord, I'm tired all the time. I'm tired all the time. Just keep your faith right in your sister's You'll cross over. Praise God. And just as sure as I stand here this way with you tonight, Sister Spencer, by His grace, I'll see you and Jess across the bar here. Young and You all be running home, my brother and my brother. Yeah. I'll see you. Father God, this girl had a break in, and she's out of reach of this. There's only a on him. But I come for her tonight. I come to you, Father. I come asking you to direct the shop that I oh, shall find. May it be exactly zero of the crosshairs on the back. <coughs> May this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ strike that nervousness and tear it to pieces. Yeah. Bring back this sheep of God's chance. It just has to be in the name. Hallelujah. God of heaven, grant that her six children that she desires to be saved. She's heard that testimony of Brother Dalton, his lovely daughters. She yes. desires her six children, Father. May she have them. May they be her in that land where they are safely protected and sheltered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you have them, sister, in my prayer. There's nothing hard that can help it. They give them a little stuff that are like a or something like a set of it's a uh, corner zone they call it and that that kills you on it carries your blood. So but look, see that the arthritis is like the line to grab the sheep and run away away. Now what would a little slingshot do? Ooh my. There's a big roaring line of the lamb. And he loves the lamb, so he's gonna offer the lamb. But David cut the slingshot in one hand. Amen. See, now watch. He has five rocks. F-A-I-T-H. Himself. I-N. The sling was in his hand. J-N-S-U-S. Now. He's a dead shot. <laughs> Something has to happen. Let's go after that arthritis tonight. By this prayer. May God give it. Amen. She wants to be that God. No, she didn't say. You want to be that God. Thank you, sister. Not because of that's what it is because I 
if that was in the Bible for Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I, I believe that. I'd say like a Jesus I, I look forward to being different. I, 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 no, I wouldn't let, I, I'm going to be responsible for that, you see. And I've got to say just the way that says it. Not to be different, but to be honest. Now, Father, we come for her love. Yes, Jesus. It's got our apparatus, and here she wants her to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. For that is the entrance. That's the open gate. That's where Joshua opened up one path that crossed over into the promised land. There was only two or three places opened up. There was just one. Yes. Peter on the day of Pentecost when the church was first inaugurated opened up a path that repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Never did they vary from that same path. Each one crossed into the promised land. Some of them were trying to get across way down at another ford. And Paul said to him, Until what was you baptized? Where are you trying to cross at? And they said, Down here where John was. He said, Well, John only pointed to the time and the place. And then when they heard this, they were baptized at the right ford. And they went across. And we see the Holy Spirit coming. Granted to our sister and her loved one in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother Lyle? Again, you really fight me. Come on. 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 down to a river, a lake, and I catch some little fishes, and the Holy Spirit came up on me. There was a, this man is a Jehovah Witness. Was. His brother's here somewhere, Hank's Woods, he's in here somewhere, which is my neighbor. This is lying. And these people were Jehovah Witness. And they said one day when we was fishing down there, after this boy got converted, I told him there was something in his life more what taking place and all about it, which he just now told me, and he just now got it out of his life. That's right, whatever it was. It's exactly right. His father was the one that was a, a reader. Is that your reader? No, no, no. And he and his wife both was baptized. Go yes. have witnesses in the name of Jesus Christ here in the pool. And this man was sitting by him, my brother. Banks, where are you? See inside. Right back in the corner. Back in the corner, yes. Yeah. And we were fishing. And brother, my little boy had killed, I thought he killed a kitten a few days ago. That little old mother cat had a bunch of little kittens and he picked it up and dropped it. And I thought, and I said, the Lord is going to raise a little life up. Uh, the day before, is that right now? Setting up in a cold. And I said, that's thus saith the Lord. And we fished all night. It caught nothing. The next morning, we were fishing back in a little cove for some bluegill, that small fish. And Brother Lyle had a big pole, and he let a little bluegill swallow it, the big hook he had. So when he pulled it out, the little string was all the way down, the big hook in the little bluegill's belly. And when he pulled it out, he just had to pull the entrails and everything else out of the little bluegill. Gill, and I just pulled it all out because the big hook had got caught down. And the fish is better. And when he did, he threw it out on the water, and it just quivered four or five times, and that was it, because his entrails and gills was hanging out of his mouth. And he floated around there for about a half hour, floated back up into the bushes, and I was sitting there fishing, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes, and said, speak to that fish. I said, little fishy, Jesus Christ gives you your life again. And that little fish laying dead on the water, turned over on his side and went, out into the water. 
Brother Lyle, Brother Lloyd, you said in prison. Brother Lyle said, Brother Brown, that be for me because I said, Can I, I can tell him what you said. Uh, he said, when he pulled the intro, Zara Lady 30 out there, said, You shot your last water. It was like that. So God, he said, it, it, it meant me. And I said, No, Brother Lyle. That wasn't it. Brother Banks back there said, How many people in this world, how many thousands would love to be standing where we're standing right now? To see the power of God come down and perform something like that. In other words, the, like I believe we all felt like Peter did, it's good to be here, let's build three tabernacles. <laughs> okay. Now, Brother Lyle, you're lying to the Holy Spirit now. You've left Egypt. The garlic pots and the filth of the world was left behind. Yeah. You're standing down to the Jordan Bank now, just across Yonah. May God take you over. Yes. Almighty God, here's your trophy. He sure was in an awful fix, Lord. But my heart went for him. Our prayers have struck the very chilling blow, Yonah. And the very thing that held him has gone from him. It's been smashed. And now he's walking down to the Jordan. Yes. Take him to the promised land, yes. Lord, and see him among the people. Yes. But on that glorious day when we shall meet down there, may I feel the voice of his arms screaming, my precious brother. Amen. I can hold him. Bring thanks along with him, Lord, will you? Papa, Mama, and all of them. Sister and all that great family. Yes. May we all meet down there, Lord. Never one of them be filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You will receive it, brother. God bless you, brother. Yes, brother. There's someone dying on a long distance call and offering the service to Brother Neville. Amen. <coughs> great and wonderful day in the Lord God has done some wonderful things for us today my expectations are fully met let us stand together to our feet remember the service then Wednesday night be praying much all dissatisfied Uncertain hearts be much in contact with God. The time is at hand. Yes. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. God bless each and every one of you visitors and people from distances. Our prayer is that God shall give you journeying mercy back to your places of abode. Nice to have had you with us. And pray for us as you go that the Lord will bless in this place too. Our Heavenly Father, as your servant has come tonight to do the office work of thy servant and prophet, standing in between the gap, making up the hedge, coming to us with the burning passion of thy servant as baptized with the Holy Ghost, and given the office of prophet to speak to this generation. Help us today and tonight to receive the message that comes to us, Lord, the exhortation to be prepared. Bless each and every one that goes from the doors of this building tonight. May the sickness that's upon us that we know nothing about, may your blessed grace and power Preserve and protect and heal us and keep us until that time when you're ready to transfer us to the other side. Bless all the discouraged and disappointed, the fearful, and those who are weak. God, we pray tonight for a special visitation, Holy Ghost benediction to rest upon each wayfarer, each pilgrim, each stranger in our gates. Each one who goes out the door tonight, may that veil covering of blood from the cross of Calvary sufficiently cover and provide. Heal us when we're sick.
Keep us by thy mighty power. Anoint us for service. Let us walk in love before thee all the days of our life. And we'll praise thee for this, for we ask it in Jesus Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. And God bless you. And we're happy to have had you shake hands with one another. So we sent the rock of faith. So I sent prayer after him. In the name of Jesus Christ. He laid him down and no cross, no death on his No death, no cross, no respiration, no nothing. I said he's out. He's out from the dead. She's leading away there with the prayer. This is still open? Yes. Can I know your attention? When I was a man of vengeance, a preacher up in Indiana was preaching, dropped down in the pulpit just about an hour ago. While he was preaching, fell forward and died in the pulpit, a noted evangelist, a preaching up here at Indiana. The pastor just come and just called me. He died while preaching under the anointing of the Spirit. Fell forward. His eyes set. His respiration left him. He's pronounced dead. Been laying dead for an hour. And something told him to call the church and have me pray. So I sent prayer to bring him back in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. May you join with me by faith Amen. that it won't miss the target. Amen. And trust you to bring it back. Thank you. God be with you. I'll see you Wednesday night. New people from Georgia and around. Bye bye. God be with you. Brother Paul.
going to. I'm so glad you were here. And Jar will be with you and worship him with you too.